Stephen Adholm here from the Turkey Song Experimental Homestead and today the burning question is can you remove burr knots from apple and pear trees like these ugly things here? I believe you can. Uh, the ones I did three or four years ago are looking pretty good. I'll show you some examples, briefly explain the theory on which I proceeded and then we'll cut a few out and follow them up in maybe three years. Burr knots are a collection of little rootlet tissue that is on the trunk of the tree instead of underground where it's supposed to be. So basically it's a mass of little roots trying to grow on the trunk. Of course they can't grow anywhere because they just dry out if they grow out. But they'll continue to expand and get larger and larger and you can see like these eventually are probably going to join together and form this giant mass on the side. So they're really unpreferable and should be removed. Borers, um, these you know kind of grubs that get under the bark and into the wood and eat their way around like to lay eggs in there. In fact, um, there's a borer that's often referred to as burr knot borer. So we want to get rid of those things and it's best to do it when the tree's young, but um, I think at this point it's still totally doable. I most often see them at a site where a branch, like a little shoot or branch was cut off, but I think they can also form in an area where there's a bud. Mostly you see them on clonal rootstocks that are prone to forming burr knots like M111, which is what this is. But sometimes they'll form just in random spots on a tree and certain varieties are much more prone to forming them. So that's the best thing is to just to plant right near the graft union so the entire rootstock is underneath the ground and those roots are fine then, that's great. They can form roots and grow underground. So here's one that I cut out uh, again three or four years ago. The tissue looks good. I can't be 100% sure that there's no rootlets in this area that are growing back, but you know, on examination and looking at the other ones I've done, it doesn't look like it. So, you know, again, in another three or four years, I could be more sure about that. But for now, I think I'm sure enough that I would recommend that you go ahead and proceed to try to cut them off if you have them. If we take a look at this as a cross section of a tree trunk, cut in half lengthwise. This is the wood. The brown here is the bark. But where everything really happens and the magic happens in growing a tree is this thin pink line here called the cambium tissue. So the cambium and the cambial cells are what make wood and bark. So these cells are dividing into bark and wood all the time. They can also divide to make uh, start, you know, branches and roots too. So for some reason, if this is a burr knot, then this cambial tissue right in this area has specialized to start growing little roots instead of just normal tree trunk and branches. If we look at this from the front, um, say these, these are all your little speckly roots in here, if we were to cut this off, there's a limit to this tissue to this specialized root forming tissue. So if we go and we cut outside of that and remove the cambium, again, the cambium is what makes everything happen. So if we remove the bark first, outside, just a little bit outside of this zone, then we should get rid of all that specialized tissue that makes um, roots. So what we'll be left with is wood. So we also want to take off a thin layer of wood. So if we were to say cut this off first, we remove the bark, obviously we go outside of this specialized tissue so we're not seeing any more of these little rootlets at all because you can see them in the wood. And then to make sure we cut out just a little thin layer of the wood as well. I think that's the key to getting rid of these things is to remove all of the specialized cambium tissue and then this tissue which will begin to heal over gradually year by year will be hopefully just normal cells that don't form roots. All right it's time to operate here. This is a little awkward camera. But... And yeah, this is going to be a pretty big wound, but I need to compare that to the eventuality of all three of these burr knots on the side here growing together and forming one big tumor.
Now you can see all these little dots here are rootlets. So we want to carve out around the outside until we don't see any more of those. Now I have two specialized knives here. One's a crooked knife from my friend Greg Blomberg of Kestrel Tool, and this is a gouge that I made. And you could use probably, you know, a pocket knife or a grafting knife or something, but I use these because I want to leave a very smooth surface, and it's easy to do with these, like, scooping type of tools. So hopefully you can see well in this macro shot and see some of these little rootlet dots. They're pretty subtle, but I tried to cut all the way outside of all of those um, by a good little margin. And most of them are right here, but some, there were a few outliers, so I had to go out pretty far. I also tried to leave the wood fairly smooth. I'm trying to get it you know, flat and perfectly smooth, but I just don't want any real deep nicks where water could get and sit in there and gr dirt and grow fungus and stuff like that. Same with the bark. I tried to leave the bark edge nice and smooth here so that, again, it doesn't have any jagged edges and it can just grow and heal more easily. It's just, uh, you know, good practice. I've sealed these up before with Doc Farwell's grafting seal, which is this yellow paint that you may have noticed on the trunk in certain places. And uh, that seemed to work okay. This year when I tried to do one of them in melted pine pitch. Pine pitch has its own antiseptic properties, you know, it's antifungal and antibacterial. It sticks to stuff pretty tenaciously and I think overall it might make a better a better seal that actually has some antimicrobial properties that would be useful versus the Doc Farwell's grafting wax or seal. It's more like a, a thick paint which, uh, you know, might seal it up for a while, but could also just end up holding moisture underneath between the wood and the, the paint. So uh, this year I think I'll do one of each, and then in about, I'll see you in about two or three years uh, when we do a follow-up on this and see how it's doing. I like the looks of that.